The Lodge is a film that plays at your psyche. There are no monsters or ghosts, no creepy little girls, no vengeful, knife-wielding slashers. The monster in this film is the mind itself. What do I mean by the mind itself? The Lodge is a horror film that understands that you are expecting things to happen in a certain way and works within that understanding. It knows that you are expecting specific events to happen as part of some kind of horror blueprint, and then it subverts your expectations. Let's take a look at these series of shots. The directors, Severin Fiala and Veronica Franz, have a knack for creating these long, drawn-out, eerie sequences. They're masters at holding the shot just long enough to make you uncomfortable, but not so long they become boring. The interplay of light and shadows makes an otherwise ordinary scene look and feel ominous, foreboding, chilling. They invite you, as the viewer, to create illusions and monsters in your own mind. There is just enough information provided for your natural instincts to kick in and trigger a fight-or-flight response, but there's nowhere to run. The inner mind begins to fabricate a sense of abstract horror when confronted with something that just feels... off. And just when you feel like you know what's coming, it strikes. Before we continue, I need to introduce some basic plot elements, but be warned there are light spoilers ahead. If you are interested in this film and haven't seen it, I suggest you pause this and go watch it right now, then come back and finish this video when you're done. I won't spoil the main turning points of the film, but it's honestly best to go in without knowing much at all. This is Grace. She has a troubled past as the daughter of a cult leader, and as a result, has numerous psychological issues which she takes many kinds of medication for. She is dating Richard, a recent widower due to the fact that his wife killed herself when she found out he was leaving her for Grace. Yeah, this movie doesn't pull any punches. Richard's children, Aiden and Mia, blame Grace for their mother's death, understandably so. Six months after their mother's death, Grace thinks it's a good idea for her to spend some alone time with the kids in the family lodge so they can bond and get used to their new mom. That about sets the stage for the rest of this video. Religious symbology is ever present in this movie, as we get glimpses into Grace's past and find she was the daughter of a cult leader. She has deeply ingrained anxiety and mental struggles associated with her past and the religious undertones surrounding it. We see this come into play time and time again as she struggles to deal with the various pieces of Christian symbology throughout the film. Which brings me to this painting. This is a work titled Virgin Annunciate by Antonella da Messina sometime in the 15th century. It depicts the biblical Virgin Mary interrupted in her reading by the Angel of Annunciation to inform her she is to give birth to Jesus Christ. Early on, the directors spend nearly a full 10 seconds introducing the painting to the viewer, layering the visual sequence with audio of the kid's mother, Laura, calling out to Mia. This establishes a symbolic link between the Madonna and Laura, a link that will be revisited time and time again through the rest of the film. Here we see Grace completely isolated, alone, alone with the mother, alone with her past, alone with her… sandwich. As she slowly chews, the shot slowly zooms in. Her expression becomes filled with an increasing mix of unease, anger, dread, and perhaps shame. As the shot shifts, we see she is staring into the piercing gaze of the Madonna. This time, the lighting and tone make her appear foreboding and judgmental, glaring back at Grace with an unbearable intensity that she finds hard to handle. And she can't, so she decides to sit on the other side of the table. But this doesn't work. We can see her expression become increasingly more anxious still. Now she feels the burn of the gaze behind her, the silent judgment, without the ability to see the one judging. Unable to take it anymore, she gets up, takes down the painting, and hides it behind the drawer. When we begin to look at this sequence of shots with the painting as part of a greater whole, it weaves together this narrative of Grace being locked in a mental battle with not only her past religious trauma, 
but also with the constant rejection and judgment she feels as she attempts to fulfill the role of their late mother, an insurmountable task doomed from the start. Every interaction she has with this painting pushes her closer to her mind's breaking point. This ties back to my original point that this movie preys on the mind. The painting itself doesn't change, but its context within the plot, as well as the lighting and angle, all make it appear as if it's another character in the movie. It acts simultaneously as a reminder of Grace's religious past, the unbearable truth and unending judgment from the mother Laura, and even serves as if the lodge itself is staring back at Grace, and you, the viewer. Next, take a look at the way Grace is framed throughout the movie. There are two primary types of shots that the directors use to portray her, wide angle and zoom. First, let's take a look at the wide angle shots when Grace is alone. Notice how small she is in the frame, Hello? how little space she takes up compared to the space around her. She is surrounded by empty, starkly lit environments, full of browns, grays, blacks, and whites. It's a visual representation of the isolation of not only being physically removed, but mentally devoid of contact as the kids continue to shun her. These shots give us a visual cue of her inner mind state in these moments. Small, alone, lost in the void. Now compare those wide-angle shots with this series of narrow and focused moments. Notice again how much of the frame Grace takes up. In contrast to before, Grace fills almost the entire frame constantly. We're given close-ups of her facial expression, with subtle but constant eye movements. It paints an image of claustrophobia and paranoia, an image of a woman trapped in her own mind, unable to find an escape hatch, much like her inability to escape the isolation of a wintry cabin in a snowstorm. These are two sides of the same coin. On one hand, she is physically and emotionally isolated in a place far from comfort, far from civilization, and far from familiarity. On the other hand, she is becoming increasingly closed in, trapped in her own mind, her restraints ever tightening. She constantly second guesses herself, what she says, and how she acts in a feeble attempt to fulfill her self-expected role as the family's new wife and mother. The Lodge is a rare kind of horror film. It succeeds in being terrifying without the need for monsters or ghosts. It plays itself out in the minds of the viewers by giving a glimpse into the psyche of an unstable woman put into a nightmarish scenario, trying to cope with the absurd realities presented before her. For me, this is horror at its best, the kind of horror that lingers with you, because it was never really there in the first place. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Tim, and this was my first video essay ever. I had a lot of fun making it, so I plan on making a lot more in the future, covering a lot of different topics. So please consider subscribing if you enjoyed it and want to see more. Let me know what you thought about it, and let me know if there's anything you'd like to see me discuss in the future. That's all for now, so thanks for watching, and have a good one.